What's up everyone, my name is Joshua Kirk. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to look at color managed workflows for editors within DaVinci Resolve. Now you might be an editor and think, I don't have to worry about color. Why does this concern me? Well, the reason is, is that you're gonna get a whole lot of source footage that's generally flat if it's been shot on a modern camera. So it might be coming through with the Sony S-Log or Canon C-Log, or it might be shot on uh, Blackmagic with B-Raw or even a Red or an Ari. And what you've gotta do is convert that into a Rec. 709 color space to make it pop, to give it good contrast and saturation so that you can view it in the intended output. If you're an editor and all you're doing is watching log flat footage as you're editing, it's not gonna help you make the best decisions as an editor, so you really want to be viewing all your footage in a Rec. 709 color space. What does that mean? It basically means you need to convert your flat footage into normal looking footage before you edit. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this, but DaVinci Resolve makes it super simple with literally a click of one button. If you're on a bigger production in a bigger commercial setting or a feature film, then you're gonna have a DIT on set, a digital imaging technician, who's generally gonna transcode all of the camera raw dailies and apply a program LUT or some kind of conversion so that when the dailies go off to the director, they're actually viewing it in a way that is intended to be the final output of the program. On a smaller production, with many commercial jobs that we do we obviously don't have that luxury so as an editor it's our job to do that conversion and we're going to jump into DaVinci right now and have a look at the preferences and how we set this up. There's two simple steps that we need to take. The first one is to bring up the preferences by hitting command shift comma and this will bring up our preferences menu and under the color management tab we want to select DaVinci YRGB color managed for the color science standard dynamic range for X709 and gamma 2.4 is fine for this project and pay attention to this footage in the background when I click save this is converted now into a Rec. 709 space essentially what this is doing is telling Resolve to convert all of your camera original footage so again S-Log, C-Log, whatever log footage you're using, any kind of raw footage, and it's automatically gonna convert that into a Rec. 709 space. So the second stage is then to bring up my source footage within the media pool, right click and choose the input color space that I want DaVinci to convert from. So this footage was shot on a Ursa Mini 4.6K with the film setting. So if I go ahead and select that, this has now told DaVinci that the source footage is Ursa Mini Blackmagic Film and it's displayed in a Rec. 709 color space. Now in my timeline, all of this footage is converted nicely into a Rec. 709 color space. Now if I have multiple cameras, all I need to do is simply choose the camera that is different, highlight the footage from that camera, right click and choose the specific color space that that camera was shot in. This footage was shot on a Blackmagic 6K with the generation four color science. So I'm going ahead and select that. And when I bring this footage into the timeline, it looks like it's part of the same color space as this footage was shot. So this is a really powerful way to very quickly get multiple cameras looking like they're part of the same project without having to do any color grading or color correction. Now it's obvious that this is not the final color grade for this project, but when we do hand it off to the colorist, all we need to simply do is bring up that preferences menu again and turn our project back into a standard DaVinci YRGB color space and hit save. And now all of my source footage is back to the original raw state ready for color grading. One final thing I'll point out is that this conversion with the color managed workspace doesn't bog down the computer in any way. So I'm still able to scrub through my timeline, view all of this raw footage in a way that doesn't bog my computer down. If I was to apply a LUT to each of these individual clips, the computer is having to work a lot harder than it would be by using this method. Alrighty, I hope that was helpful for everyone. Please like, subscribe, and drop a comment in the comment box below. I'll be sure to answer any questions you might have about this or any questions about filmmaking and editing in general. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.